Hello, everyone, and welcome to this presentation, this speech about how we can apply generative AI techniques and large language models on the healthcare sector, processing large volumes of data, and how we can apply these models for clinical coding and clinical um, documentation exploitation. My name is Carlos Rodriguez Amellan, and it's a pleasure to me being here talking about this such an interesting topic. Uh, well, basically, if you have any many, uh, questions, please uh, ask them at the end of the presentation. I will be more than happy to answer them. Okay. Uh, just a uh, fast uh, presentation. As I mentioned my, uh, before, my name is Carlos, and I work in Fujitsu in the Center of Excellence of Data Intelligence, a global center of excellence, in which I am the technical responsible of generative AI uh, uh, practice and also of uh, natural language processing techniques. So let's start with the, with the presentation. As a brief uh, introduction, we will talk today about how we can apply and take advantage of the, all these uh, uh, advancements in generative AI. Okay. Also, we know that we can apply these techniques in computer vision, in audio, of course, in natural language processing. But today, we will be focusing on how we can apply these techniques, these novel techniques, in the healthcare sector. Uh, basically, uh, these technologies and these models are revolutioning the healthcare sector by providing novel solutions in, in order to enhance medical care and streamline clinical processes. And we will see today how we can do that when, with actual uh, real examples. Basically, when we talk about the healthcare sector, we can think about hospitals, for example. We think that uh, we want, when we go to the hospital or we went, for example, um, go to the pharma or whatever, we are generating millions and millions of documents, images, text, tables, and so on. And in order to analyze and to exploit uh, uh, all this uh, information is a huge, uh, is a huge task, a very complex task. And actually, the, in terms of the linguistic and the, and the, and the lexical, the, com the medical terminology is very, very complex. The medical sector uses very specific lexical, very, very specific terms, and it's very, very, very complicated. Actually, doctors and the people who work in hospitals and study in, the, in this sector uh, pass a lot of time doing manual review and manual annotations and coding processes. So this is a very low value uh, task for them. Uh, so maybe we think about what, how we can apply these technologies in order to, uh, let's say, uh, free their time can be very, very interesting idea. Also, the evolution of the medical knowledge and the limited interoperability between systems, because when we work with different with an structured data, in order to communicate with it, between different systems and machine is, is not possible. And also in terms of how information appears in medical documents is also very, very complex. Think about, for example, negations or complex relationship, relationships between uh, different entities or maybe other linguistic challenges. But if we think about the opportunities that LLMs and generative AI, AI give us is uh, basically the efficient exploitation of large corpora, or for example, automate uh, the automatic uh, automatic labeling of documents or reduction of coding errors because manual effort, improve interoperability, and also apply better and um, complex models in order to understand better the semantic and the context of the different documents. So let's start with this image. When we talk about healthcare data, I'm talking, I'm referring to different databases. I am referring to different reports, medical reports. I am referring also, for example, to electronic health records. And I am also referring to uh, scientific papers, scientific publications, for example, from PubMed. The idea is to use, instead of using different uh, natural language processing models or different semantic capabilities, for different tasks. The idea is to reuse uh, foundational models like GPT-4, like for example, Lama 2 or Mixtral, using a single model or a set of single models in order to solve different and very, very complex tasks. Here we have a set of them, such as document classification or cl clinical coding, or for example, pattern or trend search. And the idea is to create not only systems that are able to extract information and value from these kind of documents or from these kind of data sources, but also to create, in, to create interfaces between human and machines 
in which the humans are able to ask in natural language to the databases or to the knowledge bases and get responses in a, let's say, human friendly way. OK, so let's put an example. This is an example of uh, Social Disney. Social Disney is a Spanish project from uh, Plantiel. In Spanish is Plan Tecnologías del Lenguaje. It's something like language technology uh, plan and also from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Basically, they were scrapping Twitter and they were reviewing these uh, tweets and annotating with the, uh, natural language processing techniques these tweets in order to find some patterns, some correlations, some trends in the in the tweets that they have uh, they downloaded, but taking uh, uh, putting focus on clinical information. Let's 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 and then analyze comorbidity uh, between different entities, like for example, COVID, or between cancer, or between specific uh, genetic mutations, or specific drugs, or whatever. The result you, you have here the at the bottom of the slide you have here the links to the sources. But the result we can we can see the results in a in a in a single picture is something like this, which, uh, in which we have a big, a huge actually graph in which every node of the graph corresponds to a specific clinical entity. For example, uh, as I mentioned before, cancer or COVID-19 or whatever. And the relationships between different entities, between different nodes, are if uh, are the um, co-occurrence relationships. Basically, if in a, in a single tweet, in the same tweet appear or co-occur two terms, then we say that they are um, they are related, okay? So we can show not only the frequency of the different terms, but also the relationship between different different clinical entities. And this is a very, very interesting, inter interesting job, actually working with open source data, like uh, Twitter in that case, okay? Another very important and uh, important challenge, an important task in the healthcare sector, and actually this is the pivotal topic of this uh, of this, this speech, is clinical coding. When we talk about clinical coding, clinical coding is basically a process in which we are standardizing different entities that appears in the in the clinical documents, like for example electronic health records. And basically here, what we are doing is to assign a, a specific code, an alphanumeric code, to a specific words, to a specific pieces of text. So, for example, for uh, diagnosis or, for example, uh, medical procedures or medical treatments, uh, maybe for other clinical aspects. All these clinical aspects uh, have at least one clinical uh, code. Okay, We will see later an example of that. These codes are very, very useful because this, this, it is a way to standardize the, the information, to categorize medical information uniformly. Uh, we don't care about the language. We are not talking about, for example, English or Spanish or French or German or whatever. We are mapping all these clinical terms, clinical uh, text to a specific codes. And this is very important because all the medical service billing systems, also clinical research and the different management systems for health data, works uh, with these uh, codes with these clinical codes there are different entity uh, not entities sorry there are different ontologies clinical taxonomies for different clinical coding like ICD-10 like SNOMI CT like NDC there are uh, UMLS there are a lot of them uh, and different ontologies and taxonomy serves for a specific purposes, for, for different purposes but the idea is to have an, a standardized way and a standardized taxonomy to represent the reality the thing here is that annotate or code, uh, for example, electronic health records is a task that consumes a lot of time for clinical people, people who works in these kind of, of jobs. Uh, here we have an example of the ICD-10, that is a specific taxonomy, of the ICD-10 code for asthma, for example. And if you take a look to the right, we can see that we have a lot of information. It's like a hierarchical tree with all the different relationships between asthma, uh, with different synonyms, and also with different relationships. As I mentioned before, it's like a hierarchical tree. And this is one uh, an example just of a... Of a a single term, a single, a single diagnosis. Okay, so 
what we need to do if we want to implement a complete pipeline for clinical coding. Uh, actually, this this pipeline consists in three different steps, in three different different stages. The first one, of course, and let's let's uh, put as an example. Uh, imagine that we want to code uh, in ICD-10 different uh, electronic health records, electronic health record from a hospital, for example. The first step is to pre-process the information. So as any other natural language processing uh, project, what we need to do is to extract the content from the document and perform some kind of uh, text pre-processing, section identification and chunking, for example. And yes, of course, we can up here, we can apply large language models as well as other uh, many other techniques and many other, let's say, more classical natural language processing techniques. We can apply large language models in order to pre-process the text, standardize the format, uh, for example, reduce the number of uh, syntactic or uh, linguistic errors and so on, but also uh, they can be uh, a very good tool, powerful tool for detecting relevant information. Maybe if we want to annotate uh, diagnosis and procedures uh, only, we are not interested in the specific sections of the document. Who knows? The idea here is that we can apply these kind of models in order to take advantage, in order to uh, pre-process the documents. Then one, what we need to do is to identify candidates and when i say candidates i am referring to specific terms that are um, uh, candidates to be code so procedures i am di diagnostic in, in, in this specific use case and this is the, the task is name it and the recognition of course llms are a very powerful technique or a very interesting approach in order to perform name it and the recognition actually if we think about the most uh, popular uh, large language models uh, nowadays, like for example, GPT-4 or Cloud-2 or Lama-2, uh, Cloud-3, uh, Lama-2 or Mistral, for example, they are perfect approaches for uh, for name identity recognition, also for clinical entity recognition, name identity recognition in the healthcare domain. But if we if we perform a search on the internet, probably we will see that there are many large language models or transform transformers based models such as for example meditron or burn those that are uh, retrained or fine-tuned with these specific uh, documents actually here you can see an example of how with burn2 an open source model you can codify uh, in different ontologies, clinical taxonomies, different entity types, like for example, cell types or species or gene or protein, DNA or whatever, okay? Taking into account uh, the coding step, the entity linking step, and imagine that we already have a set of different entities detected in the previous step. The clinical coding uh, here, of course, we can use large language models, but with a single large language model is not enough. Because for example, if you think about GPT-4, GPT-4 is able to detect entities, but is not able to uh, know or to memorize all the different codes for all the different entities it's import is impossible the cardinality of this lexicon is, is is very very huge and actually it modifies uh <clears throat> among time okay so here the idea is to apply different fuzzy lexical search over a graph knowledge base and then of course we can apply uh, llms in order to deambiguate the results let's put this on an example <coughs> Sorry, imagine that we have a set of different entities, we have a set of different diagnoses and procedures, for example, and we perform a lexical search over a knowledge base that we already have in our service, in our servers. Sorry, for example, ICD-10 or SNOM CT. If we perform a lexical search, fuzzy lexical search, we need to define a text similar metric. Uh, okay, so if we uh, define not only the text similar metric, but also a threshold, we can say to the system, okay, I want all the results that uh, uh, return me more than a specific value for the score, for the score, and this value must be above a specific threshold. Depending on the threshold, of course, we will receive more or less or no results, but that's the idea that underneath the 
entity linking step. Of course, then we can apply, for example, imagine that we are receiving, I don't know, three, four, five, six, seven different uh, results. Of course, we can apply here generative AI in order to filter the, uh, the obtained results, okay? So here I will talk on the last part of the presentation. I will give you a real example, a real use case, successful case of how we can apply uh, generative AI, large language models, and as well as other different techniques in order to perform clinical coding on real world uh, projects. And is we and is with the Fujitsu ADP Toolkit. Fujitsu ADP Toolkit is a platform that we have created in Fujitsu in order to deliver services uh, in the in the natural language processing domain for different uh, customers in different sectors, working with different documents for different challenges and tasks. And um, when, if we take a look to how Fujitsu AIDP works with an structured documents for name identity recognition, basically what we do here is to detect different entities such as person names, locations, mobile phones, and so on. It's a typical process of name identity recognition. Of course, we do the same with the healthcare uh, in the healthcare domain. But the thing here, the most interesting interesting thing here, sorry, is that we can apply, and, and actually we do, we can apply uh, real-world ontologies or real-world taxonomies in order to map the detected entities to an according to these uh, specific um, uh, taxonomies and ontologies. In the, dom in the healthcare sector, we are detecting diagnosis, procedure, drugs, and so on, these clinical entities. And then we apply, um, for example, as I mentioned before, ICD-10 taxonomies, or for example, Islamic CT ontologies, and so on. So we can help humans in the hospitals, for example, or in clinics, or wherever, we can help humans in order to perform this very time demanding task. Actually, this is an example, a real example of um, of how a human using this tool for each UAP can use this user interface uh, that basically reflects two things. Uh, at right, we have a PDF viewer in which, uh, at least in this example, a real example, we have a patient discard report with, of course, uh, personal data that is anonymized. Anonymized, anonymized. But we have here a different um, clinical data, for example, the diagnosis. Okay, And at left, we have the output of the generative AI system in which uh, basically the system is detecting relevant information in the document and also returning the specific entity uh, codes. In that case, we are coding in ICD-10 for every code. Uh, here, uh, with this tool, the human is able to, in a single minute, uh, no more, review the document, review the results, correct if, the, if there is any error with the, with the output of the model, and if everything is okay, submit the results and continue reviewing other documents. This tool is saving more than 95% of the time of clinic of manual clinical coding for all these uh, all these people. Okay. Uh, as a summary, conclusions of the of this task of this uh, talk. Sorry, uh, we have uh, we we saw how uh, in general, of course. Uh, generative AI can be applied for any uh, natural language processing project. Of course, LLMs are not a trend, are a reality. And of course, we can apply these kind of technologies in the healthcare sector in order to exploit, to, to, to take advantage of large volumes of data. Actually, very, very interesting, as we saw in the sample of social disner, in order to identify key patterns and trends. Of course, if we apply these techniques in, a, in an orchestrated way, we can free up time for healthcare professionals, as we show in the sample of clinical coding, but basically uh, allowing them on focusing on higher value activities and pay, uh, putting more attention or more interesting and valuable, valuable tasks like direct, direct patient care, or basically the interpretation of clinical results. Uh, of course, uh, everything is possible with these novel models, these novel generative AI techniques. And that's all for, for today. Thank you very much. If you have, as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, if you have any question, I will be more than happy to, to answer them. Thank you for listening.